Now, before I get into it, just uh, a couple things. Obviously, all our iTrack coloring and logo will be changed for your specific company needs. Um, and then the one more thing to mention alongside Power BI is that there are slicers on the left-hand side here and on the top. So if you ever want to filter through your data, uh, it's you know it's seamlessly just clicking a button. And then there are some hard-coded filters that you can change as well on the right-hand side here. So if I say the word filters, I'm talking about this right panel. And I'm talking about slicers. It's this left panel here. Cool. So let's begin. So first we have this title page. Now it's uh, you know very low level, like tip of the iceberg kind of analytics. You don't really stare at this for ten minutes, but you know week over week, day over day, you can see some uh, you know some delta, some changeover, uh, you know, in incidents and and uh, risk you know, but injuries, that kind of stuff, right? So once you get this title page, it's really just meant to catch your eye and if something is drastic, like, you know, your TRIF here is, you know, 40, that's a problem. And then you have to actually deepen, uh, dig deeper into the report uh, to get more information. And then, so the title page, very self-explanatory, just, you know, your, uh, your quick splash of data when you're on the go. Next is this action registry. Um, I'm not sure what your company calls it. It might be called, you know, form tasks, maybe called corrective actions. Whenever a task is assigned to a user, this is the Power BI report you want to view. Now, what it does is this green line chart will go, and this is, you know, uh, every task that has been completed over the days. Right? So you go through, every time you see this orange, that's an issue because what that orange means is there was a task that was due, but it wasn't completed. So once you click that specific day, for example, you know, it pops up and it says there were actually, you know, uh, three tasks that were requested that haven't been finished. You know, they haven't hosted the team, they haven't refilled the kit, and they haven't swapped the fire extinguisher. And if you actually just drag down to the right here, uh, this form link button, if you click it, it actually opens up the, uh, the portal for you and if you log in you can actually see the entire form if you have the correct uh, credentials obviously then you can go through the form in a bit more depth to see you know the notes and what, what's exactly happening there cool. right then it gives us some stats like average time till due date average days to complete a task how many were completed you know overdue requested right and if you want to filter by a specific month so let's say i want to do december of 2019, right? And only in Calgary, for example, you have the ability to filter that. Cool. So next is the risk counts. Now I wasn't too sure how to graph this out, to be honest with you guys, because uh, I, the purpose of a metric is, you know, you, you you go through it, you see that okay, you know, the top five risks, the one that's killing us the most is, you know, heavy lift or awkward to lift. How can we, you know, mitigate these risks? So I'm still trying to figure out a way to link that back to the actual injury. Then, you know, bottom five, top five injured body parts, and then top five classifications. Very simple. You know, now next is training. Um, in the iTrack system, you know, we have the ability to, you know, push our courses through into the environments and actually assign it to employees and see if they've been approved or if they're properly certified, you know, for first aid, for WMIS, for a driver's license, that kind of things, right? So we see here that we can filter by all the employees who've been approved on a certification. And then through there, we can filter, let's say we want to see, you know, driver certifications. And then if we only want to see, you know, Alberta class ones, if we just click that here, it actually filters that as well. So we can see here that, you know, you know, Darren's been approved, Kevin's been approved, Mark, so on and so forth, and that the recertification dates are as follows, right? You have the ability to clear filters with this eraser here. So like I mentioned, the UI of Power BI is actually insane, and it's just such a user-friendly experience that you shouldn't have to go behind, you know, the cells that, like, Excel does. And Sorry, then, you know... There, um, we just have a question here. Maybe this is something Darren can answer. Um, from Christy Giberson, can we push the charts to teams without requiring all users to have a license? 
If yes, can the user filter the data to their needs? So with Teams, that's a new addition. I think that happened like a month ago. So I'm not entirely sure about that. I think Microsoft does put a license uh, well between that. But something that some clients do is they actually embed the report um, to a link. Now what that does is unfortunately, whoever has the link can access your data. So your data, you lose that security aspect of it, but any sort of, uh, any licensed user can actually go and uh, access it. So I'll give an example of that once at the end of the session, um, but it just gives this online web portal. You lose a bit of refresh time and that kind of things, but that's another possibility to bypass it. And then Darren can message in the chat box if there's a way to get it through with Teams. I'm not entirely sure if that's possible though. Yeah, you, you're right, Cosmo. Um, if you embed it in Teams, if you embed that um, kind of open link that anyone can access, um, obviously you don't need a license for that, right? But if you do want to share it through Power BI Pro, um, then, and have the security, then yes, you, you do need to be licensed. Um, now, again, the one thing that Casm, if you start getting to the Power BI Premium, then you're buying compute and then anyone, like you get as many licenses as you want then after that. But again, there's there's a pretty high cost barrier to, to get into that. Yeah, that's about 6,000 per month. Cool. And then as you're going through, there's some more metrics on the side. And then if you wanna filter by department, you can do that, you can do that as well. So the cool thing about Power BI, if you've been seeing, every time you click one visual, um, all the visuals will dynamically change with it. If you have the also you also have the ability to stop that interaction. It's completely up to you. Cool. Uh, next is competency. So very similar to training. You know you're able to see the status of the competency, right? See who's who's competent and which aspect um, and which procedure. Sorry. And then this matrix here on the left side. You know this works best for small companies, but if you're a massive company, it still works fine. Just a bit more data to go through. Um, and you just you know scroll through the right and see that. You know, Darren's been competent in the rig move. And this one he was last reviewed on, which was four years ago. So maybe you should go back to him and get him to, you know, to review the procedures. Now, uh, whether this is a task-based competency or role-based competency, I track 365 does both. So it's completely up to you. Cool. Uh, next is the event overview. This is just meant for, you know, those monthly safety inspections. You want to make sure they're being finished on time. Nothing too cool about this dashboard here. If you guys do use events in a specific way and you feel like, you know, it'd be cool to see it in a certain way, feel free to send us that feedback and I'm definitely uh, excited to ramp up this, this report a bit more. So next for you HS, HSC lovers here, uh, we have a risk matrix, right? Currently it's still bare boned. I call this the beta field of it, but you know, it says it's, it's as simple as whenever a uh, risk gets tracked, you know, it adds the number to your risk matrix. Um, this demo environment uses a four by four. We can change it to five by five, five by six, whatever you want to do it. Um, obviously filtering by day and year works as well. Um, I am looking into ways into, you know, because once you currently click this, you know, catastrophic, catastrophic probable, uh, you know, card, nothing really happens. But that risk is probably the most important risk you want to see. So I'm trying to find a way to link this to, you know, to the table to link it back to the portal. Uh, cool. Now, this is another work in progress. Uh, this cause analysis uh, visual is very new to Power BI. So I am trying to, you know, link of a way for it to go, you know, to safety, what kind of events it was, basic root causes, actually a proper tree instead of all of these being on the same level. But the idea behind it is that, you know, you click through safety, click through the root causes, you know, you see the maintenance, you see it wasn't lubricated properly and that he didn't sharpen his knife. And then once you go through there, you can click the form link to get back to the portal. So the idea behind this is having a more concise, you know, cause analysis roll up. Cool. Uh, you know, then we have our reactive efforts. Um, obviously for just this, the sales demo for the, you know, the demo environments, we only have incident and near miss. Your company might have a lot more. And then when you, once you click incidents, you go through it and you're able to see all the incidents on the table here. And uh, something to note actually, let's say you have, you know, 10,000 columns. You're not gonna sit there and scroll one by one. You actually have the ability, if you are an Excel fan, <laughs> to click more options here. And you can export these data, uh, this data here, and it exports all the columns you have. 
right? Um, if you do have Power BI report server, you have the ability to seamlessly add fields to these tables. Whereas if you're, you know, using that open link, like I mentioned, you do lose some limitations, you know, um, cool. And then the other ability you can do, you can actually drill down through charts as well. So using this down arrow here, by clicking incidents, you know, you see the injury incidents, equipment incidents, and motor vehicle incidents, or you have the ability to drill down through all of them, you know, incident injury, near miss motor vehicle, near miss injury, and so on, and actually filter the table, filter the table through that as well, right? Cool. And then you have your proactive, same idea, just on the other side of HSC. You know, your safety meetings, your pre-work hazard assessments, your observations, whatever your company want classifies as proactive, we can list this here. Then we have our incident count, um, which is similar but different because this ties into more of injury classifications, I guess you could say. Um, so, you know, we have injury, equipment, and property damage, and motor vehicle. And then once you drill down again, you know, you see injury medical treatments, injury required first aid, lost time, restricted work. And then if you only want to see, you know, the lost times, everything filters through again, right? If you want to drill through it all again, you have the ability as well. Then we have our process flow participation. I've been saying the word forms, forms and process flow are interchangeable. I'm just uh, getting used to the new verbiage. But you know what this says is you're saying, okay, you know, we have all these process flows created, who's actually properly using them. And then for those process flows, um, you know, that have to be done on a weekly or monthly, uh, you know, time period, how come they're not being done, you know, fully? So we click here, monthly visual tank inspection. For example, Judy only filled out one of these process flows, but the project has been going on for three months. She's not keeping up with doing her inspections, right? It's just a way for you to track your employees, you know, participation and making sure they're doing the job safely. And then finally, you have, you know, your 2019 stats, uh, you know, your recordable injuries, your leading indicators inspection, your health and safety lagging, and your 2019 leading. These are, like I said, as always, customizable to your company's needs. This is just for uh, uh, demo purposes. And then from there, let's say, you know, 2019 is over, we're getting into 2020. This filters pane that's only available for um, Power BI Pro or Power BI Report users. You have the ability to just click it, and you know, instead of 2019, let's change 2020. Then the, the data will dynamically change as if, as if it was a slicer. All right, something to note there. And that's the Power BI desktop. Um, this is obviously, if I click this, and I want to see this as a pie chart, it's as simple as just clicking the buttons, and you know everything changes to however you want to see it. That's why I prefer this over Power Pivot, so I like the UI a bit better. All right now, to get into the Power BI reporting server, it's you know very similar in that you know you have the ability to filter and slicer as much as you please, but the differences are. You know, you have the ability to edit through here. You can analyze it through Excel. You can embed this link to SharePoint or to the website. Uh, this is published to web. If I click it, for example, it gives you a warning saying, you know, you can do it, but it becomes publicly available. That, you know, there's no more security behind it. The second someone gets this link, your data is going to be published, you know, uh, I think forever until the report gets deleted. And then one more thing I'll show you here is if I go back to the workspaces, all right, and we see here the out of box safety demo. If I right click it, I can do two things here. If I go get quick insights, you know, it's doing its thing in the background here. But if I go settings, scheduled refresh, this thing is huge. You know, there's there's been a, a lot of times that, uh, you know, a company with like, a gigabyte of data needs to be refreshed and I'm waiting there for three hours just watching there the refresh spin but if I set this up in a way that you know it's it's refreshing every day at 12 o'clock a.m right that when I get to work the next day in the morning I know that my data is going to be refreshed properly um Paula from Enviroist any thoughts on how to incorporate a hazard register yes, and power you. bi um, 
I'll let an HSC specialist <laughs> uh, answer that question in the chat or if they want to unmute their mic. I am not entirely sure. Uh, Paul, this is Michelle. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Michelle. Paul, when you say your hazard register, are you talking about your tasks or the risks from the hazard assessment? Uh, the risks from the hazard assessment. Oh, so it almost would be like you would have your tasks and then you would, do you want to know the frequency of the risk? Um, yeah, yeah, so what I, where I'm coming from with this is really around around what we have existing, which is hazard registers within um, Excel spreadsheets um, and how we could potentially have a company wide hazard register which has our core hazards um, within a Power BI format. Yeah, so I think if you sent us your spreadsheet, we would be able to take, um, we've done lots of stuff with the hazard assessment, so it just depends if you want to just have all of them listed out. Yeah. Um, like if they're, if they're out in the field and you're identifying new hazards, or if you want to know the frequency of that specific task. So I we we've done similar things like that. We just want to we probably would need yeah. to see what you have to get it up on the Power BI. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Michelle. No worries. You know, I'm you know I'm good to help you with Power BI, Paula. It's been fun working with EnviroWaste data. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like as I mentioned earlier, I clicked that view insights button. And then, you know, unfortunately, the way the I check verbiage is doesn't give you the best, right? Because it thinks that a status is to the employee. But if you go through, it actually tries its best, you know, using its AI to find out, you know, uh, status code by first name, the rolling average of statuses, so on and so forth. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this, it doesn't really help with our data set, is that's something that I'm working towards in the future is actually, you know, naming our, you know, having our naming convention be a bit better, that way Power BI can read those AIs. And also, if I create a new tab here, and I open it here, you can you, know, you can actually ask questions about your data, right? So if you wanna see, for example, it might not make any sense, what is the total hours worked by hierarchy name? You know, it gives you, you know, from in Alberta, they've worked this many hours. But if I go into settings, and this is a new feature coming to Power BI as well, they actually teach QA, right? So it's something I'll be working on in the future. But if I, you know, start asking questions like uh, most uh, most used form type by employee, for example, right? By employee name. It actually tries its best to filter this. It gives you the number. And then you can actually save that as a question to give to your front end users. All right, so there's a lot of possibilities with QA. I'm still learning it myself, hence the suggest questions button, but uh, that's definitely like a, a sneak peek with more to come. Cool. Now, before I go back to the slide, are, are there any questions about Power BI, Power BI reporting? And feel free to unmute yourself. I love hearing people's voices. It makes me seem like I'm not talking to myself. Cool. So with the resources, um, I am, like I mentioned earlier, the customer support representative. So once you email that support at neosystems.com, I am actually the first uh, contact. So if you have any Power BI questions as well, feel free to message me there. We have live webinars. I'll actually click the link for you guys. Let's see if I can go through this. We, it's not gonna work, but. We have webinars, you know, um, quite, I believe it's every week where we've done Power BI webinars, very simple ones like configuration, navigation, and, you know, data manipulation. So if you actually click it, it will believe links you to the you know, YouTube channel where you can just watch our previously recorded webinars, oh. or you have the ability to go down and see which ones are coming up. All right, so uh, we've, done a, we've done a webinar a week since, I believe, February, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy to think. And then finally, you can go back to our YouTube channel like I mentioned earlier. Now, I just showed you guys this awesome uh, Power BI report. 
it actually is available to any customer for free. Um, if you guys do want it, feel free to send me that uh, that email on support at Neosystems, and I can give you guys that PBIX file. Um, if you guys do want me to, you know, let's say you have a Power BI team on hand, you guys probably don't need me to implement it. But you know, if you don't have any Power BI people, I can provide you with uh, with the implementation. So up until June 31st, if you message support at Neosystems, I can give you a conference price, you know, of $2,500, or I can give you guys a regular price of $3,000 um, if you guys do end up passing that the, the benchmark. So like I said, if you fill in messages, and then honestly, if you want to talk, if you want to talk a bit about the metrics that you would have shown or something that your company does that's pretty exciting, the you know the the more we learn together, the uh, the safer everyone will be. And all the links are in the the chat box as well. Thank you, Karin. And then obviously our upcoming sessions are in there. I believe the last one of the day is ending in half an hour about customer support, which I'll be there as well. And thank you for attending. I will be staying back for five minutes if there's any questions. Um, and I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Aaron uh, Lapointe has a question here. Um, will there be a sandbox test environment to play with this in before we buy it? Um, Darren, do you want to comment on that? I could give them the CRM demo one, but they don't have access to publishing. So that would be a Darren question. Yeah, I mean, good. currently we don't have anything now, Aaron. Um, you know, it wouldn't be hard for us to, to I guess, to spin something up and, and um, pass you a link, right, where where you can try it out. Um, I mean, really, it's just, um, you know, again, it's a PPI X file, and and as long as you're using kind of the standard um, out of the box eye track stuff, which you know most of you are, um, <clears throat> you know, the best thing to do is probably just, you know, take the PPI X, load it up into your environment, and, and hook it up. Um, you know, just point it to your sandbox, right, and uh, try it that way, and then you know, see see what you think and see how much of it is you know working out of the box versus, you know, how much you would have to, uh, you know, add add some filters and that. So so just for example, right, um, like proactive um, safety, um, you know, everyone's going to have uh, uh, different processes that they run through iTrack for proactive safety. Um, so you know, there would be you know something that you'd have to do there where you're saying, yeah, these you know, process flows are proactive, so someone has to go in there and, you know, change the filters to, to do it. But um, other than that, like we've, we've tested this with some clients and, you know, I would say, you know, uh, probably 75% of it kind of, you know, just works out of the box, right, without having to do much more. So I would suggest just getting the PBIX and, and giving that a shot. If you guys do want to see more of the PBIX, uh, feel free to reach out. Do we have any other questions? I was just going to say, um, so we can show our teams in our, or the Power BI, we can show that right in a Teams window, correct? Yes. So do we have to, it shows the whole thing or just a um, tab? I can show you guys that, I believe. Uh, I don't know if. You could go to Verified Beef, it's there. Is Verified Beef there? Yeah. I just thought it would be good to kind of show that to this group here. Uh, where's verified beef? I'm not in the team, I guess. Oh, I, we could just make one and then use the. It's basically you can on your um, you can make a a tab and you can actually have your Power BI right there within Teams, so you don't if you're depending on how you're using it. So that's pretty cool. So this is my personal challenge channel that I send myself notes to. So once you click this, you know, plus sign. Go to Power BI, and you go to the workspace that it's in. So for me, it's in Neo Systems. Everyone, click that out of out of box safety demo. Click save. You know this is how you see it. All right. Um, very similar to the reporting server. The only difference, obviously, is you can't uh, edit it. But it's I believe the same exact thing. Well, thank you, Kasim. Thank you, Michelle, for bringing that up. And then what I can do, one more thing I'll show you guys, one more little, because it was asked about the licensing. Mm, let's see which uh, test one I can use. 
I can show you guys what it looks like when it's embedded into a link. Just that way it's uh, our workspace. Let's go this one, I guess. Cool. Let's see if I can do this here. So this is obviously some uh, false financial data that I don't care too much about. If I publish this to web and I bypass you know, that embedded code and I click publish, and I copy the link, make it the biggest size, copy it again, close it, and uh, paste it here. Show you guys the differences. So you see here that on the right side here, there is no filters pane. So here where I can filter by executive is nine, seven, or 10, you know, is Alan, is Brad. On this side, I can't. So whatever uh, the company gives you is sort of the card you're dealt with, unfortunately. Um, the other thing is that that's where the benefit of slicers come in. So if I go here and I make the slicer, excuse me, include every, um, you know, executive to exist, right? Once you go back here, you can actually filter using the slicer on the left-hand side. So depending on how truncated you want your reports to look, you have the ability to uh, use slicers instead of filters, if that makes sense. But the other thing I mentioned is that if I do make a change, um, it takes quite a bit of time for it to reach its embedded link depending on how much data you use it. So that's another way you can bypass the licensing. And with that being said, I'll wait a couple more minutes for any other questions to come. Thank you guys for coming, I really appreciate it. I am still new to this presentation and uh, you know this HSC lifestyle, so if you guys have any personal feedback, definitely trying to improve and feel free to send it using the link posted in chat.